In this video, I'm going to use the Arduino Yoon uh, to create a project that takes temperature measurements and then um, emails the values to uh, an email account. And our Arduino Yoon is different than uh, most of the other Arduinos. There's actually two processors on it. One is um, the Atmega 32U4, so it's similar to the other Atmega chips on other Arduinos, but then there's also an Atheros AR9331 processor, and this processor is used in um, uh, routers, so it can run uh, slimmed down versions of Linux, uh, like OpenWRT, or a version of that. Um, so it, the UN has built in um, Wi Fi. Uh, external USB and micro SD support as well. So it's it's really different than the other Arduinos, kind of a unique one. Okay, so once you have your Yoon uh, configured and set up, there's two ways you can access it. And the first is just using uh, just standard SSH. And so you would log in as root. Let's see. Okay, so once you log in, you'll notice um, it's you're basically on Linux, but uh, OpenWRT is a, is a really slimmed down version of Linux. But like if you look at the root directory, you know if you're familiar with Linux, this is going to be really familiar. The shell you log into is called Ash. I think there's other shells you can uh, add to this, but I haven't done it, and I'm just using the default. So <clears throat> so once you're in here, you know you can configure things um, on the Linux side but they also provide um, a user interface called Lucy okay so that's what this is so I've gone to that just to the IP address of the Yoon and then I log in and and right now there's only one user set up um, and that's just root so that's what I'm logging in as and this interface is actually really nice um, I usually like command line, but um, for configuring the Yoon, this is probably how you'd want to do it. So this opening page just gives you some some information, um, what your IP address is, MAC address, um, that kind of stuff. You can also upload sketches through here, um, but it has to be a, a compiled sketch, so I don't usually do that. I just use the regular Arduino IDE. Okay, so, um, but if you go to configure, um, so you get a lot of options here. Um, if you want to, this is the, the name of the union, you can change the password and all that stuff. Um, your Wi Fi network settings. But then if you go to advanced, this is actually the, the Lucy interface. Okay, so, so this has a lot of options that you can set up, like, um, firewall, the system logs. This is like a lot of the Linux type stuff. And yeah, system administration software. You can you can add software packages this way instead of through the command line and it shows you everything that's installed. So um so it's pretty nice. Um so anyway, so so th that's how you would access the UN. Okay, so this is the Yoon board, and um, you can tell right away it looks different than normal Arduino boards, uh, mainly, especially this part here. So this has got um, the Atheros 9331 processor in built-in Wi-Fi in this little part here. This, has a, this is an Ethernet uh, jack, and this is an uh, external USB port, so that's different than the this little USB port here that you use to connect to your computer to program it. Okay, and then you got just this kind of the standard pins that you would see maybe on an Arduino Uno. This is the the Atmega chip, and that's the Atmega 32U4 processor. Okay, so um, there's no voltage regulator on this board, so that's that's also different than like an uh, Arduino Uno, so you want to make sure and use uh, uh, exactly 5 volts. There's no barrel jack, 
So, but even if you even if you apply voltage to the VN pin, you have to apply five volts there. Um, and of course, five volts will power it through this uh, micro USB port as well. Okay, so um, this this at Mega chip is the same chip that the the Arduino Leonardo uses, so you know, have that same functionality. Uh, the Atheros 9331 processor. So this is a system on a chip, and it's it's designed. It was originally designed um, to work on wireless routers. Okay, and it has, like I said, built-in wireless uh, IEEE 802.11n. Um, and on on that processor, um, I have loaded an operating system. It's a version of Open W. WRT, which is used on routers, but this is specifically for the UN, so it's um, just open WRT UN, so that's a Linux distribution. And it also has uh, a micro SD card here where you can store data. And I've actually set this up to where my um, my system files also are on this card. Normally it's in. Um, memory inside the the Atheros uh, processor but um, you're really limited on the amount of space you have and there's a way you can set it up so you can boot uh, basically from this um, from this micro SD card and that's where your root directory will reside okay and then uh, on the UN then so this at mega processor in the um, Atheros processor can kind of talk to each other through a, a serial bridge, okay? So you can write Arduino sketches uh, that can then access functionality on the Atheros using libraries. So you could run, you can make calls from the Atmega chip to run like Python scripts or to access this USB port or this uh, Ethernet um, shield or the Wi-Fi itself. And that's what I'm going to do. So... I'm gonna um, I'm gonna write a um, a sketch that's gonna read temperature values, and then the Atmega is gonna pass those on and make a make a call to the um, actually to a library that's then gonna take those temperature values and send out email through the through the Wi-Fi. Okay, so this is the circuit for the temperature sensor, and this this is an LM35D sensor. Okay, so there's only three pins on it. And um, the red red wire is the five volt uh, pin so that goes to five volts on the Arduino. The black wire is the ground pin that goes to ground on the Arduino. And then the white wire uh, for the middle pin that's the going to be the analog input pin. So that's going to have the actual temperature readings. Okay. So and I've just got that connected to analog zero on the UN. Okay, so this is the uh, the Arduino sketch I'm using, and basically this is going to take a temperature every 30 minutes and then email it to an email address that I set up. And to do this, um, the way I've done it, I've set up a, a Tembu account. Okay, so, and if you go to their website, you can set up an account, and they'll their library will handle the emailing for you. So they even have a page. Um, if you go to tembu.com slash arduino slash un slash send an email this is basically the sketch I'm using and this is the the setup of how to do that so you create a, an account on Tembu and it's f it's free they have a basic account that's free um, they have a another type of account that you can pay for that you get you know more features so and this is the, basically the sketch I use I just copied it out here I modified it a little bit but um Okay, so, so once you have your Tembu account set up and Tembu information, um, this is how you would use it with the UN. So you would, you for the UN, you want to include bridge.h. That has nothing to do with Tembu. That's any any um, sketch you're going to upload to the uh, UN. You, you'll need that. And since I'm using Tembu, I'll include the Tembu um, header. And then I, I have to create a Tembu account.h header. And that's going to have your account information. I removed my account information, but you you would have these three defines. And again, this sketch you can get off the Tembu site. That's where I got it. 
and then um, okay so just some basic stuff the sensor pin for my temperature sensor is 10 0 this is this is how many emails I've set it up to run for just the way the sketch is written I'll get 10 emails one every 30 minutes if you wanted obviously to always get emails you would just you wouldn't have a max run you would you would just send an email every 30 minutes um, these, these are just some arrays to set up a string that's gonna hold the temperature information um, set up I'm writing some stuff to the serial monitor again this is for some string formatting okay so then for every you sketch you're gonna do bridge begin so that initializes the bridge so then in the loops again this is tracking the max runs which I've set to 10 so it's gonna basically do this uh, if statement go through here 10 times I'm setting the delay, delay time to 30 minutes here um, then basically get get the temperature value format the temperature value in a string current temp is uh, that's a that's a float to ASCII function I have down below that'll turn that temperature value into a string um, I'm writing the value out to the serial monitor okay so now this is where I'm using the Tembu library so it's Tembu Corio and I have a um, I'm gonna call it send email Corio again so you initialize it here okay and this is where you set your account information and this came from this file these these variables here or these defines okay so then this is where you set up the email so that's your Timbu username goes here and I, again I've removed my information to address so that's the email address you want to send it to this is going to be the subject on the email I just said current temperature and that's the password that you get from that you set up with Timbu and then the message body which is temp string and again that's that's the temperature so it's gonna the body's gonna say current temp and then the temperature in F for Fahrenheit okay so then <clears throat> so this is the the library the Tembu library that's on the UN and the Tembu library uh, at least on my open WRT uh, came already installed I don't think I had to install that so that's just the location so you shouldn't have to change that okay and then, then you just do run okay and then it um, it checks to make sure you got a uh, HTTP code 200 for success and I think it prints that out and then you close and then you delay 30 minutes okay so um, the other functions these are really just basic get te the get temperature uh, it does an analog read off the sensor pin and then I convert it um, here do the conversion to Fahrenheit and to uh, convert the analog reading into the Celsius reading there okay and it just returns the temperature then this last this last function is just the float to ASCII so um, I think there's some functions that don't that only print strings and I think I think this this body has to be a, a string so that's why I'm using the sprintf up here so I want to do float to ASCII convert that value to a string okay so then once uh, once your sketch compiles I'm not going to compile this one because like I said I already removed uh, some of this information I've already uploaded the, the sketch but you would just go to tools and then the board you would go Arduino Yoon and then just make sure that your port is pointing to the UN and then you just upload it normally you could also upload this there's a way to do it um, through Wi-Fi okay so the way you do that is just go when you go to ports it should find it here if it's on your local network so I could could upload it that way it's a little slower but the sketch isn't that big so it wouldn't really matter so there's there would be two ways you can upload it okay so here's the um, the emails that were sent from the UN um, with the current temperatures so yeah these were sent out 
uh, every 30 minutes, that's just what I had it set to. Okay, so there you have it. That's just kind of a basic demonstration of the Arduino Yoon. Um, does a, a good bit more than just uh, like an Arduino Uno because of the the Wi-Fi abilities. Um, to be honest, if you were going to use a project and were considering the Yoon, you probably want to maybe first look at maybe um, a Raspberry Pi just because they're cheaper. Um, a Yoon on Amazon anyway is about 65 US dollars. They make Yoon Shields that are about half that price, about 31. So a Yoon Shield would be about the same price as a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so anyway, thank you for watching the video. Oh,